Hi, my name is Jason Short, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Okay, here we have a very simple .NET 3.5 console application with no references to VistaDB yet. All I've done is basically create the sample project. We're going to right click, say add new item, then we're going to select data, and we're going to choose an entity data model. And I'm just going to call this the ticket model. Say generate from database. And it turns out I actually do not already have that connection there. So we will just say give me a new database. And I want to go into the ticket sample app data simple ticket system you can go ahead and test say OK and we are going to call this ticket entities this will also create an entry for you in the server Explorer when you're done with this um, take a look here are all of the tables in the sample ticket and I'm just going to call this the ticket model and hit finish Now if the Entity Framework Designer does not come up and show you your model like this when it's done, then something failed during the model generation. I've seen this happen in SQL Server and other Entity Framework providers. Sometimes it just doesn't. Uh, most often when you delete the model and regen it, it'll come up fine. I have no idea why that's happening, but I can assure you we're still looking for it. Now once your model comes up, uh, see this little thumbnail launches the viewer? You can click on that and now you can actually scroll around in the model and actually see all the various tables and the relationships. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can get a better view here. This gives you a pretty good idea of what all is in this particular database. Now taking a look at this, you can actually see that tickets are related to sub-projects, are related to projects, related to ticket events. I mean, all the relationships here are mapped. Um, and that's literally all there is to ginning a model. Now that we have the model, one of the things that we're going to need to do is to add a licenses.licensex file to the project so that we have a VistaDB license. You can just say I want a new text file, call it licenses.licensex, and it'll create a nice blank file for you. In the start menu, we actually do include a sample licenses license X file with VistaDB. You can map that. Just make a copy of everything in here, put it into your licenses license X, save it. And what that basically does is every time Visual Studio now goes to compile, it'll compile that license and give you a runtime license in your project. We're also going to go ahead and add a reference here to the VistaDB for runtime and the VistaDB for EF. So this is the VistaDB for provider and the provider for EF. And now we're going to switch over here to the program. And as you can see, this is just a real simple main here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this new ticket entities that we created here. And I'm just going to allocate a new one. Now I'm going to get a variable of the results. I'm going to say just give me ticket dot tickets where x and let's just say we could take any of these but let's say is open is equal to true and then now we're going to do a for each single result in results and no I don't normally use vars like this but this is just for a real quick sample so we're gonna go ahead and do a right line and we're gonna say the ticket and let's just take the single result dot and let's just take the open date there we go. Let's output that. Let's 
go ahead and compile. You'll notice that the lc.exe is running here and it's basically saying that this executable needs a runtime license from the licenses license x. This is all very standard stuff in Visual Studio and it output our executable. I'm going to set a breakpoint right here. Now if we take a look here, we've hit our breakpoint and an interesting thing to note here with the entity framework is that we can actually step over this and you will notice that we actually are now stepping into this class that was generated by the entity framework and it has a default uh, connection here that is in your app config if you take a look you actually see there's this, this ticket entities connection here and that's what it's going to use by default and it actually has our full path and everything that we put in it so you can customize that you don't have to use the one that's there this is just the default constructor so let's go ahead and let that keep running and an interesting thing to note here is that the tickets.where all of this lambda expression has not actually happened yet. If you expand the results here you'll see that it says expanding the results view will enumerate the I enumerable. This right now is really still a lambda expression until something actually tries to enumerate it. So I'm going to keep stepping over that. Now is when we've actually making the round trip to the database uh, performing the actual query. So you can end up with some strange error lines on things that you didn't think would necessarily blow up. So that is a very quick overview um, of compiling an entity framework application. And uh, take a look on the website for more information coming soon. Thank you. Bye.